Just a quick little disclaimer here. This video is specifically designed for complete beginners new to the Monster Hunter series. I think that a lot of veteran players tend to overlook some of the most basic concepts compared to what new brand new players are even thinking of and overwhelmed with. So that's the little disclaimer out of the way. Now here are the general tips that I think you're going to want to know as a beginner that's going to help you out a lot. So let's first go over quests. You've got a few different types, but the main one you want to really focus your attention on are the main key quests. They're going to be designated with this little red signal here to any of the quests that you see here. You're going to want to take care of these because this is how you actually progress through the main campaign of Monster Hunter Rise. Now on the side of that, you also have these sub quests. Sub quests are just different tasks that you're able to do to pick up. And by doing them, you're kind of rewarded these several different types of things, uh, most notably the armor spheres, which you, you're gonna use those to upgrade your armor sets. And finally, you've got these requests from NPCs. These are just random little quests that NPCs will give you that you get nice rewards from as well. For instance, you'll get some great wire bugs from random little quests. You'll also receive you know, different talismans. You might get another submarine for your Argosy, things like that. So don't sleep on these. You want to complete these as well. But the main key quests, that's going to be your main focus. Before you actually go head out on your quest and go on the hunt, you want to eat meals beforehand. Eating a meal is going to go ahead and increase your stamina as well as your HP, but more than anything, it can give these tiny little passive abilities at the very beginning of the game too, which can be pretty helpful as well. Now when you're out in the hunt, pick up everything that you can gather items in the beginning you're not going to have a lot of supplies so it's truly best to just pick up everything that you can specifically you know mine ore spots for iron ore you know grab bones from bone piles pick up honey you know different herbs all that kind of good stuff mite seeds adamant seeds these are all things that you want to pick up you don't really need to go out of your way to pick these things up but definitely pick them up because you'd rather have them than not need them now to add to that before you find your big hunt that you're really trying to fight there's going to be these random little monsters that you see Try to take these guys out as much as possible. You know, these guys have little random materials that can help in crafting you know, different upgrades for your weapons or your armor sets, for instance. You know, the Kelby, for instance, is pretty good because it'll have useful items to actually use for crafting with items. Your item box is going to get completely cluttered and overwhelmed with all sorts of different items, whether that be like the pelts, the mushrooms, all sorts of different stuff. So building an item loadout template can help you just have the essential items that you want to have instead of always having to look and hunt and peck for the items that you want to just go ahead and put into your pouch. So these loadouts can help you keep organized as well as just have a go-to to say this is the stuff that I want on the beginning of the hunt. You can fill that loadout with stuff like you know a potion, mega potion, a max potion, you know having as, as much as you can of these items, right? You can also have some trap tools, a couple of tra traps like the shock trap, the pitfall trap, maybe even you have a thunder bug and some nets as well as some trap tools to be able to make those on the fly if you need. So create item loadouts Outs specifically so you can keep things organized and you already know what items you want to come into the hunt with. Now when I first checked out the blacksmith I was completely overwhelmed I didn't know what any of this all meant. I've actually talked to a couple of new players and they kind of feel the same way. So all you need to know is that here you can well obviously it's a blacksmith right you can forge and upgrade your weapons and armor. But to keep things simple and less overwhelmed for you, just keep this in mind. Now with weapons, just pick one, maybe even two different weapon trees that you actually want to go down, right? You don't need to create every single weapon. You know, you don't have to get every one of them. And also understand this, that unless you actually have one of the ingredients to make that weapon or to upgrade it, it won't show. It'll just stay as this question mark. 
So just keep that in mind because when you find the upgrading part, that's when it will open up and you're like, oh, okay, now that's what, these are the things that I actually need to go ahead and get those to upgrade them, right? So just keep that in mind. You know, as far as the armor goes, it's, it's very similar. Uh, just a quick little recommendation. The Izuchi armor set is like extremely good in the very beginning of the game. So I would suggest that. But again, try to keep things a little bit more simplified for you guys. Just go for one to two, maybe even three different weapons. You don't need to go for every single one of them. Eventually, a quest is going to open up that's going to give you access to the Argosy. This is where you can utilize your buddies to essentially get items for you while you're out completing hunts. Some good items to keep in mind for the beginning of the game are things like honey, trap tools, raw meat, things like that. Just kind of utility is what you want to be going for just so that you have that stuff so you don't need it later on. During your hunts, you're gonna have a wolf, which is you know the Palamute, and a cat that follows you around, the, the Palico. The wolf is mainly used for battling. It doesn't always do the most amazing job. You can upgrade its equipment to start doing a little bit more damage, of course. But the Palico is the one you really want to focus on. The Palico has the ability to do all sorts of things, from either healing, to supporting you, to battling, or to even just gathering items during your quest. Well, I like to use the Palamutes to send with the Argosy as well as the Meowcenaries. You know, these are different things to be able to kind of procure items and gather items when I'm not focusing on it, right? When I'm actually out in the hunt. Whereas the Palicos, now those are great, especially if they've got the Pilfer ability. Those guys get you different items. So just keep those in mind, right? You want to be utilizing those buddies to be able to get these different items while you're doing quests. Even though Monster Hunter Rides can be completely overwhelming, just flood you with all sorts of information, I'm hoping that some of these tips could give you a little bit of understanding and lay of the land to know what to do and what everything is all about here. Feel free to check out my other guides, and if you have anything that you want me to do content on specifically, by all means, send me a comment, throw me a like, all that good stuff, and I'd be more than happy to do it for you.